Hey everybody, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today I just want to go over some of the things I found while judging the English classes in my critiqued model horse show. So I have created this, uh, I guess, 23 page document. So I'm not gonna be doing much talking, but I am gonna link the document down below in the comments and uh, then you can read through this, but I will cover a few of the topics. First thing I've given you is a general checklist a doll checklist and a horse checklist. And basically it just reminds you, is, is everything fitting correctly? Uh, is the saddle correct? Is the bridle correct for your event? And I think one of the main things I want you to do is a lot more research. And I'm finding that's missing in some of the entries that um, if you actually took a photo and put it next to a real horse, it wouldn't look real. So I think what you need to do a lot of is take a photo of your setup step away from your setup and look at the photo. And I think that'll give you a better idea if it looks real or not. If it doesn't look real, take another photo, make some tweaks, and that'll uh, really improve your showing. One of the things we do a lot of when showing model horses is try to get versatility points. So we'll take a model and show it in all the classes. The problem with that is a lot of times the horse just doesn't fit the class. So you're gonna need to be more creative um, taking a model in the same position and just putting a barrel in front of it and a pole in front of it and calling it a new event is not going to get you first place in anything. So it's really important to get that model into a position. It, it's okay to do versatility, just be more creative. And when you are creative, documentation. Try to find some documents of a horse in the position that yours is in, doing what you need. and use that picture. I'm seeing a lot of documentation that does not match the picture. Uh, as a critique, all I need to really need to do is look at your document. So do a lot more research and try to match what the horse in the documentation is doing. Another thing I see is uh, safety. Now, some of your setups, it doesn't matter to a model, it's not gonna get hurt on your jump or whatever, but you should take into account that if in real life this horse was doing it, would it be considered safe? And the judge does take that into account. Also, and I know this is not correct in a lot of cases, but all the judges seem to get their favorites and not favorites. So one thing, if you're showing a big lick horse, your chances of placing high or low solely because a lot of judges don't like that. It, it's cruel and not nice on a horse. So take that into account when you're taking your show. Um, also, be creative with something new. Uh, I've seen some of the entries showing me classes I've never seen before, and I like that. That is interesting. And if it's done well, that is going to move you up in the placings. If you have two models both done very, very well, you're going to find that the one that's creative and teaching the judge something new is good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go. Same as with humor. If you can add a little humor to your scene class, that really is fun, and it could move you up for a tie. As for the details, let's first look at bridle fit. The bit, and I saw that a lot, the bit should look like it's in the corner of the model's mouth. Not down here or over here, it should look like it's in the corner of the mouth. The nose band should not be loose. It should give it just a little bit below the cheek. I found a lot way below the cheek line here. This should not be touching the horse's eye, and the brow band should be tight. I see a lot of them way out here. And one of the things you can do if you have a lot of forelock is actually cut the brow band for that model and sticky wax it on both sides so it looks like it's going underneath. Now the throat latch should not be hanging down here. And the reins, they should be the same, the right and the left rein, unless there's something going on in your performance class, they should be the same on both sides. Now I've taken pictures off the internet, sorry about that, but I have to be able to show what I wanna show you. Now for saddle fit, it should not be too forward. This needs to be free here. It can't be too far back or you'll hurt the horse. So, and this, I see a lot of these ending way up here, the skirts. The skirt should be around halfway for Hunter and a little longer for uh, dressage, and it should fit your rider. Here's just a few more pictures on fit. Now, if you see this person in real life, you're not gonna question that. This person's too far forward, she's hurting the horse. But with, for some reason with models, it doesn't seem as important. So pretend it's real. You, 
can't be sitting way up here or way back here. For English Pleasure and Hunter Hack, they're very similar in classes and you can really use the same photo in both if you document them properly. One of the biggest things I noticed is the legs. Often they were sticking out here from the knee down like the person sitting in a reclining chair. There should be a line basically dropping from the ear, the shoulder, the hip, and to the heel. For Hunter, there should be a slight forward motion. If she's posting, make sure she's posting with the outside leg forward. When they're holding the reins, they come up through the bottom, out through your uh, top of your hand, and then the bite of the reins comes to the right. In a canter, they should be more forward, not sitting up straight. In dressage, they sit up straight. But this is a beautiful position for a canter in Hunter. Here is what I'm talking about when I mean the line. So right here, the heel is actually in a good position here, not out the front. But what you're going to have to do is lengthen your stirrups, get more bend with the heels down, and scooch her bum forward and her slight lean forward so that she is in with a blue line, not the red line. For both trail and games, I had a real hard time with the riders not looking at what they're doing or seeming to be involved or, uh, or into what they're doing. Here you can see the horse looking at what it's doing. The rider is looking at what it's doing. She's putting her hands forward to help the horse with what she's doing. She's not just sitting up looking forward and the horse is not just sitting looking forward. So be creative so that it makes it look like your model is looking at what it's doing and so is the rider. And same with the games. I found people just sitting up straight and doing something. So with games, you should be fully invested. These riders are doing stuff. These are, English games are much more energetic generally than Western games because it's generally pony club, it's kids, and they're in it. So make your model look like they're doing something and that the rider's doing something. They're leaning to do what they're doing. Not just putting a hand out like they might think about leaning in the near future. They're leaning, they're actually in it and involved in the game. Now, if your horses aren't action horses, you can use a team setup, just bring another model and show the judge which one you're actually judging to have an interaction or do something fun. And hopefully she hasn't drank too much, but uh, I think she's bobbing for apples, but have them more into it. For saddle seat, the position, a lot of them are actually very good, but do your research and make sure your reins are taut. Saddle seat riders don't leave a loose rein unless they're just sitting there. So the reins should be tight and the rider sits back in this case. It's different than in, in uh, Hunter, but they still have their heels down. There's still that line coming down. If you have a model with feet kind of all over the place, stuff like these kind of classes are a lot of fun because you can put things in the way of the feet to make look like the horse is actually doing something. Now the showmanship classes I find are really lacking. Showmanship is judged on the, horse, on the rider or the, the showmanship person and usually it involves a judge. So to get a good mark, you should know where the judge is. So if you have a judge involved in your setup, you can see. And here we have a quarter horse now here we have a Hanoverian and down here we have an Arabian. We have a bridle with a chain shank. Here we just have a bridle and here we have an Arabian bridle. So do your research and include a picture in your documentation to really understand how showmanship works. I feel that this is, is really lacking. Dressage is actually an easy one for models because you can take a model in most positions that, aren't, that are behaving well. But the problem is I find that there's a real lack in the models of knowing and understanding the different levels. Now you cannot wear proper tails until level four. You need a, a safety helmet and not a top hat unless you're at the very, very highest level. So you're almost always safe with this type of hat over a uh, top hat. Again, here, both of these young horses are using snaffles. You don't need the double reins on your bridle. Now for over fences, this is actually a picture of me. I'm a jumper. I love the over fence classes. And I think this is me over at least six foot six on the Poussins. But you can see that uh, I'm tucked down there, not sitting upright. So when you're doing this, you have to check your jump. You need the uh, flags, the, right, uh, the red flag on the right, white flag on the left. You need a jump number, but the jump should also be safe. Um, in hunter classes, there should be a rail over top of your uh, fence or over top of your wall, even if it's really close to it. 
uh, jumpers should have protective boots, whereas in hunters, they have no protective boots. The only thing they're allowed is a standing martingale. But make sure it's fitted correctly and it's uh, you know not pulling on the horse's head. So one of my biggest pet peeves is where a horse is in relationship to the jump. So I have gone through, there's a lot of pictures on this document explaining it, but this is the most important. So you see this rider coming into the jump and you see where its front leg is. Now, that front leg is overtaken by the back legs, which will land right about here. And for an arc of a jump, this position right here should be the same height as the jump itself. So if your jump is four inches high in a model, then this distance right here should be four inches. So your front leg should be just a little bit more than front inch than four inches. So you can see here the back legs have taken over and she started her arc. The top of the arc should be the highest point and she's missed it a little bit. But you can see here this height right here should be where the takeoff is. And I've noticed some people putting it so close that it's going to be a crash or that they're not going to be able to get a proper position. So here is a good picture showing you if it's a single rail, the distance is the same height as the rail on both sides for your takeoff. If it's an oxer, the jump is actually higher than the oxer. The actual height of the oxer is right here. So your takeoff position would assume a pole here at that distance equal distance away. If it's a triple rail, these don't count. It's all about this one right here. The actual triple rail is just so much easier to jump. And if the same thing in Hunter. You can see here, her takeoff place, it's the same. The horse's head is doing the same. Jumper, Hunter, eventing, the jump is the same. And when approaching a jump, the rider gets into a forward position. They are not sitting upright. They're not on the forehand of the horse, but they are leaning forward a little to allow the horse to bring its shoulder up and everything and get underneath itself. I saw a lot of riders sitting straight up. Now for eventing, this is the position between jumps. You're actually jockeying a horse. You're not cantering like a regular, you're going full speed and you're up like a jockey. And the thing you can do here, which is really creative, you see this horse came down into the water, the rider was back, sits up quickly. He has to jump out quickly. So he's holding on and getting forward. And as soon as he lands on this bank, that is his takeoff place for this next jump, which allows you to take really strange position models and put them in for a great jumper position, but use a good reference. So that's all I'm actually going to say. Just research, documentation, and have your stuff fit. I hope you enjoyed this document I'm leaving you. And if you have any questions about showing in English, please leave it in the comments below and I will answer them all. Have fun and thanks for joining me. And I'm going to be working on the Western and other and give you the same kind of documentation after those. Ciao.